Hello guys, welcome to the next section, Unsupervised Learning. In this section, we will start with k-means clustering. We will then move to principal component analysis and singular value decomposition. We will also see deep autoencoder and apply it on handwritten digits. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with k-means clustering. In this video, we're going to take a look at k-means working methodology from first principle. We will also see optimal number of clusters and cluster evaluation. Finally, we will apply k-means clustering on iris data. Clustering is the task of grouping observations in such a way that members of the same cluster are more similar to each other and members of different clusters are very different from each other. In the case of social networks, they can be clustered to identify communities and to suggest missing connections between people. Here are a few examples. In anti-money laundering measures, suspicious activities in individuals can be identified using anomaly detection. In biology, clustering is used to find groups of genes with similar expression patterns. In marketing analytics, clustering is used to find segments of similar customers so that different marketing strategies could be applied to different customer segments accordingly. The k-means clustering algorithm is an iterative process of moving the centers of clusters or centroids to the mean position of their constituent points and reassigning instances to their closest clusters iteratively until there is no significant change in the number of cluster centers possible or number of iterations reached. The cost function of k-means is determined by the Euclidean distance between the observations belonging to that cluster with its respective centroid value. An intuitive way to understand the equation is, if there is only one cluster, then the distances between all the observations are compared with its single mean. Whereas, if number of clusters increases to two, then two means are calculated, and a few of the observations are assigned to cluster one, and other observations are assigned to cluster two based on proximity. Let's illustrate the k-means working methodology using first principles. In this example, we have 12 instances with their x and y values. The task is to determine the optimal clusters out of the data. After plotting the data points on a 2D chart, we can see that roughly two clusters are possible, where below left is the first cluster and the top right is another cluster. But in many practical cases, there would be so many variables that we cannot simply visualize them. Hence, we need a mathematical and algorithmic way to solve these types of problems. Let us assume two centers from two instances out of all the 12 instances. Here, we have chosen instance 1, that is x equals to 7, y equals to 8, and instance 8, that is x is equals to 1, y equals to 4, as they seem to be at both extremes. The Euclidean distance between two points A and B can be calculated like this. For each instance, we will calculate its Euclidean distances with respect to both centroids and assign it to the nearest cluster center. Centroid distance calculations are performed by taking Euclidean distances. This chart describes the assignment of instances to both centroids displayed in the table. In iteration 2, new centroids are calculated from the assigned instances for that cluster or centroid. New centroids are calculated based on the simple average of the assigned points. We will take average of centroid 1 for x that will give us 2.67 as the average and the average of centroid 1 for y is 3. We will calculate same for centroid 2 for both x and y. After updating the centroids, we need to reassign the instances to the nearest centroids, which we will be performing in iteration 3. In the third iteration, new assignments are calculated based on the Euclidean distance between instances and new centroids. In the event of any changes, new centroids will be calculated iteratively until no changes in assignments are possible or the number of iterations is reached. The table describes the distance measures between new centroids and all the instances. It seems that there are no changes registered, hence we can say that the solution is converged. One important thing to note here is that all the instances are very clearly classified well apart from instance 9. Based on instinct, it seems like it should be assigned to centroid 2, 
but after careful calculation, that instance is more proximate to cluster 1 than cluster 2. However, the difference in distance is low, that is 2.54 with centroid 1 and 2.55 with centroid 2. Now we will see the elbow method. The elbow method is used to determine the optimal number of clusters in k-means clustering. The elbow method plots the value of the cost function produced by different values of k. As you know, if k increases, average distortion will decrease. Each cluster will have fewer constituent instances, and the instances will be closer to their respective centroids. The improvements in average distortion will decline as k increases. The value of k at which improvement in distortion declines the most is called the elbow at which we should stop dividing the data into further clusters. Now we move to evaluation of clusters with silhouette coefficient. The silhouette coefficient is a measure of the compactness and separation of the clusters. Higher values represent a better quality of cluster. The silhouette coefficient is higher for compact clusters that are well separated and lower for overlapping clusters. Silhouette coefficient values do change from minus 1 to plus 1, and the higher the value is, the better. Here is the formula for silhouette coefficient. A is the mean distance between the instances in the cluster. B is the mean distance between the instance and the instances in the next closest cluster. Let us see the k-means clustering with the iris data. First, we will import the libraries that are required. We will also add k-means and silhouette score library. Let's have a look at the data that is present in the file. The iris data has three types of flowers, setosa, versicolor, and virginica, and their respective measurements of sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Our task is to group the flowers based on their measurements. After that, we will read the iris.csv file that you will get from the code bundle. We will print the first top lines from the iris data. Using this command, we will separate class variable as dependent variable for creating colors in plot and apply unsupervised learning algorithm on given x variables without any target variable does present. Now, we will assign number of clusters as 3. But in real life, we do not know how many clusters data will fall under in advance. Hence, we need to test the results by trial and error, and the maximum number of iterations is 300. Next, we will fit the X iris data. Let's print k-means confusion matrix. We will get the output like this. After that, we will print the silhouette score. As you can see, the score is 0.553. From the confusion matrix, we can see that all setosa flowers are clustered correctly, whereas 2 out of 50 versicolor and 14 out of 50 virginica flowers are incorrectly classified. Using A4 loop, we will perform sensitivity analysis to check how many number of clusters does actually provides better explanation of segments. This is the output that you will get. Now, let's see the average within cluster variation value. First, we will define the range. After that, we will fit the x iris with k means. Next, we will define the centroid. This command will compute and return the indices of the minimum values along an axis. We will then compute distance and return the minimum along a given axis. Further, we will compute distance between each pair of the two collections of inputs. We then calculate average within silhouette. We will now calculate total within sum of square. We will plot the elbow curve for average within cluster sum of squares. First, we will plot a figure. After that, we will add a subplot. Then, we will plot average within sum of squares. Next, we will set grid as true. Lastly, we will give labels to X and Y. Finally, we will show the plot. As you can see, this is the elbow curve that we will get. From the elbow plot, it seems that at the value of 3, the slope changes drastically. Here, we can select the optimal k value as 3. Now again, we will plot for elbow curve. Again, we will figure a plot. 
then add a subplot. Then we will plot average within sum of squares. And set grid is true. We will set X and Y labels. Finally, we will show the elbow curve with percent of variance. The total percentage of variance explained value should be greater than 80% to decide the optimal number of clusters. Even here, a K value of 3 seems to give a decent value of total variance explained. Hence, we can conclude from all the preceding metric silhouette, average within cluster variance and total variance explained, that the three clusters are ideal. Let's see the R code for k-means clustering using IRIS data. First, we will read the iris.csv file. After that, we will create x and y iris data. Using this command, we will define maximum iteration as 300. Now, we will print the k-means confusion matrix. This is the k-means confusion matrix. Next, we will calculate average within the cluster sum of squares. We will then plot the figure using this line of code. Let us add a title to the graph. Here is the plot for average within sum of squares. Let's print percent variance. As you can see, we will get the output like this. Now, we will plot percent variance. And add a title to the plot. This is the plot for percent variance. In this video, we've looked at k-means clustering.